Sarah Jane Kuyper, a faithful witness for Jesus Christ. Sarah Jane was born in 1925 on a farm in Chenoa, Illinois. Her life was not unlike most people. She had a loving family, attended school, made friends, and went to church on Sundays. As a freshman in high school, Sarah Jane participated in a number of camp meetings held at her church. It was there, after several nights of indecision, that she gave her heart to Jesus Christ. At the age of 20, Sarah Jane witnessed the end of World War II when the Japanese surrendered to the American forces in Hong Kong. A few years later, she heard a missionary speak concerning Japan's spiritual turmoil, and this statement resounded within her soul, missionaries must take the gospel where soldiers have taken bombs. Sarah Jane became convinced God was calling her to a life of missionary service in Japan. She wrote, I have never had the deep peace and joy that I now possess since I surrendered my personal desires to His one desire for me, giving the gospel of redemption to those in a faraway land. My prayer is that I shall be a channel through which His message can flow into the hearts of sinners, who by the power of the Holy Spirit will become saints in His kingdom. In July of 1950, at the age of 25, Sarah Jane sailed for Japan. During the next several months, she was stationed in different cities for Japanese language training. Four months after her arrival, she was stationed for a time in Tokyo. It was here in Tokyo that God used Sarah Jane to witness to a young Japanese student, Hiroshi Suzuki. He was a, a young man when she first met him. He was in high school and she met him on the stoop of her home in Tokyo. I passed by one of the house and uh, I no noticed a lady sitting uh, on the step of the porch of the house doing nothing. He was passing by and he had been going to English classes and knew by looking at her that she was an American. He stopped by to talk to her and practice his English. And at that time, I came to uh, like uh, English conversations. I thought this is a good chance to practice English conversation. And I asked her, do you have a time to practice converse, English conversation with me? She said, oh, yes. Of course, I have a lot of time. She mentioned in a prayer letter these circumstances that led her to meet Hiroshi. She was going with a group of friends and they were to get onto the train to go to visit another friend. And in the push and bustle of, the, of getting on the train, she was left behind. So when she got back to her home, realized she didn't have the keys and so she couldn't get into her home and was sitting out on the front step and just happened to have Hiroshi walk by. So we began to talk. And through the uh, talking, I, I found she was a missionary from the States. For the first time in my life, she asked me, do you believe in God? Oh, I said, no. I had been wondering for a long time why there is uh, emptiness always in my heart. But uh, I tried to find why, but nobody told me why. So I said, no. Then she said, why don't you read the Bible? You can find the answer in this book. And she, in the process of talking to him, began to share the gospel with him and asked if he would like to meet at a subsequent time. And so they met two more times. As he said, let's pray. Then, I cannot explain great change happened in my heart. Suddenly, I I realized there is holy and 
living God here or before me. And uh, I convicted strongly I was a sinner before holy and living God. I must be de uh, repentant. I must repent. I must be forgiven my sin. I asked God, please forgive my sin. Today is one of the happiest days I have lived. Today, Hiroshi returned again, and after explaining the verse, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, he said, Yes, I want to confess my sins. Hiroshi Suzuki is the first person in Japan I have been used of the Lord to win to Christ. I know that she realized that was just not by chance, that God was causing their paths to cross so that she could talk to him and share about Jesus with him. Uh, I do believe God provides all the chance to make us need on that day together. Just by being obedient, she touched the life of one who has touched the lives of many for the gospel. After five years of missionary work in Japan, Sarah Jane returned to America. Because of health reasons, she was unable to pursue her dream of serving in Japan as a long-term missionary. In 1973, Sarah Jane made one more journey to Japan and visited Hiroshi as well as other friends and fellow believers. Three years later, she went home to be with Jesus on February 26, 1976, at the age of 51. Sarah Jane's first convert, Hiroshi Suzuki, chose to follow his Savior by attending Bible college after finishing high school. Although he had the opportunity to attend law school, he yielded his life to Christ and became a pastor. Hiroshi has pastored churches throughout Japan for the past 50 years and has personally seen 100 Japanese people accept Jesus Christ and be baptized. Hiroshi has also discipled 15 Japanese converts who have chosen to become pastors. These pastors and believers are continuing the legacy that began almost 60 years ago through Sarah Jane's witness. Sarah Jane's missionary service may seem small and insignificant, and perhaps there were times when she felt her work and dreams for Japan had not materialized. Yet Sarah Jane's commitment to Christ lives on in the life of Hiroshi Suzuki, and through Hiroshi and his spiritual children, scores of Japanese people have and will continue to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. One life can make a difference for the kingdom of God. Are you ready?